Dr. Shabir. The question is, why do Muslims blame Satan rather than God when something bad happens to them or when they do something bad? <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, this has come up in the story of uh, the prophet Job. Mm -hmm. um, Muslim commentators um, cite the fact that the Quran says that uh, Job uh, complains to God that Satan has touched me with, um, with some punishment. Um, so the Imam Razi, for example, in his commentary says, well, this is just the way in which people speak. It doesn't mean that Satan actually afflicted Job. Uh, and, and more generally, um, we, we are afflicted with things and somebody may say, well, Satan has done this to me. But rather, uh, we, we should uh, not blame somebody just because he's the bad guy, like we blame everything <laughs> on him, right? This, this is a form of the discrimination guy, yeah. as well, yeah. So without evidence that Satan is doing something, we shouldn't automatically blame Satan. Uh, we, we should rather say that things are happening in the world um, and God is in full control of everything, whether good or bad is happening. And uh, to a certain extent, you can say that things are credited back to God. So it's part of Muslim expression of belief uh, that uh, we believe in uh, all the things going back to God, whether good or bad, sharihi wa, wa, wa khairi. Mm -hmm. um, because Satan doesn't have power over higher than God, right? It's not like Satan is opposite God and they're kind of dueling it out together. Exactly. He's, not he's always under God's control. Under God, yes. Yeah. So he's not, a com he's not a competing power at that level. He is trying to, to do evil in the world, but God is in full control. And, uh, and uh, it is clear from the Quran that even Satan himself acknowledges uh, that uh, your righteous servants are excluded from what I'm going to try to do because and God says, uh, this is the right path for me. In the ibadi laysa alayhim sultan. As for my uh, servants, you will not have any power over them. Illa man ittaba'aka min al ghawin, except for those uh, uh, wayward people who follow you. So, so the, it's the wayward people who follow Satan who uh, will be afflicted by Satan with in, in some ways, but uh, not the righteous servants of God. So, righteous servants of God should not be blaming Satan for, for things that happen to them. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the things that we do? Uh, we also know that uh, the human being has a certain inclination uh, to do evil things. And often when we follow that inclination, we do evil things. Somebody says, oh, but shaitan made me do that. Well, Satan doesn't make you do anything. Satan, according to the Quran, whispers. He gives you a kind of uh, inducement. Uh, but it is up to you to follow that or not. You have to follow your own conscience that is God-given. And uh, you have to, in following your conscience, you have to overcome what, is, what the Quran refers to as a nafs al-ammara. It is the, uh, the soul that commands you to do something. So it is your inner self that commands you to do wrong. Uh, and, and we shouldn't always blame the uh, inspiration to do wrong on Satan because some of that is coming uh, from ourselves. And of course, if you keep blaming Satan, there's nothing we can do about it. But if you uh, look inwardly, there is something you can do about that. You can repair yourself. You can uh, you know, go through spiritual practices and routines that will help you uh, to overcome your evil inclinations. Thank you for your time, Dr. Shapiro. You're welcome.